Hello YouTube, it's Englantine, and I've got another read and review for you. This one's going to be done a little bit different. It was requested that I read this. I was going to ignore it, let it go, because my entire America thing, I looked at it and went, oh, America Ferrara has a superhero she can play, and that would be cool, except this book is so horribly bad. I'm not going to play it and then do a review. I'm going to be talking over it, so if you want to read it, Turn the sound down, read it for yourself, and then come back and replay the video because I'm going to review it as we go. So the book starts off with this. We asked 100 people, who is America to you? And you got the new Hawkeye. I don't know who the people are in the middle. And then you got Miles Morales on the other side. And they're basically singing all of her praises. And it occurs to me to ask a question. Not we, who is America. However, you got to see who this person asking the questions has access to. Along with uh, Hawkeye and Miles Morales, they've got Loki, of all people, and the black cat here. And then you have Storm and a random lesbian. Who is, uh, who is it that's interviewing that has access to all these different people? And obviously, America goes around talking about her sexuality to random people because this random lesbian knows that she's a lesbian and therefore represents her. I haven't read all of her comics, but at some point in time, she must have said, Hey, I saved you. Don't forget, I'm gay. So right off the bat, we understand and we know that there's a gender first story second in this book. Just from that one little panel, actually. And it just shows that the writer does not know how to just let America be a lesbian. She has to make an announcement or something. It just, it's, it, I don't know. It just isn't right. But in case you didn't think there was an agenda, there's a whole reading page that describes America. America Chavez is done with the hero scene. She did the Teen Brigade thing. She basically was the Young Avengers. I never actually heard of her until now. And the Ultimates. They're cool, but saving the world every weekend is starting to get old. And it's time to punch out. Okay, I uh, added the and it's myself. Sorry. Get old, time to punch out. Okay, let's continue. But she can't go home again. She left the utopian parallel when she was a little girl after her mom's died, saving the entire multiverse. America's been on her own ever since, doing her best to be a hero just like them. And lately her friends all seem to have problems of their own. What with Loki seemingly being a full-on bad guy again, and bestie Kate Bishop, aka the real Hawkeye, now doing her own thing out on the west coast. So the writer is telling us that Loki took time out of being a full-on bad guy to say that America is one bad mamma jamma? Okie dokie. I believe that. And of course they want to push the agenda, so, uh, oh, the real Hawkeye. Well, let's debate that. One was created in the 60s, one was created yesterday. You tell me. Clinton Barton, all the way. But I digress, let's continue. So where does a super strong, queer, brown girl who can punch star-shaped holes between dimensions go to get her hero-free kicks? Cue up the music and lace up your boots. America's going to college. And then, of course, they've got the credits where we see Gabby Rivera wrote this. And uh, if you look over, you see Joe Rivera and Paolo Rivera were inkers, so I'm wondering how much of a family affair this is, or if it's just a coincidence of names. Although I do like Joe Quinone's uh, art, so, you know, hey, the book has something going for it. And it absolutely is not the writing. I mean, if, okay, I want you to pay attention to what we have learned so far from the first panels to here. On the first page, we through the uh, what do you, what is America to you, we learn that she's a hero to minorities. On the second page, we learn that she's super strong. On this page, we learn that she is a minority superhero who is super strong, and she's queer. So all the things we learned in the first two pages, we learn again in the third page. Oh, and we also learn that she was with the Ultimates. And guess what information we're going to learn again? That same stuff. I mean, right here we have them battling a creature from Maltixa. Now, the bubble says a planet on the outskirts of Utopian Parallel that is currently under attack, but not if the Ultimates have anything to say about it. Well, the planet is under attack, whether they say anything about it or not. So, the Ultimates are going to do something about it for sure. But I really don't think a lot of thought has gone into the writing except for I want to push my agenda in this. And it's proven a little bit later. So we see that they're fighting. Monica Rambeau was one of my favorite characters in the 80s. Uh, she's got a new name, Spectrum, because Captain Marvel is Captain Marvel now. 
and they can't have a black Captain Marvel. Oh, wait, I'm turning SJW there. Anyway, uh, so while they're fighting, they go through some of the worst dialogue. I mean, it, it actually says, what is it? Well, no, I'm sorry. What is this thing? It looks human-ish, but so not a human, Danvers. That is, it's just bad writing, guys. But it continues because of this crap. Blast it, Mon. Danvers, get ready to go binary. She used to be called binary. I'll be skyward as soon as I get this kid to their family. It's a she. It's a she and there's only one. Okay? It's singular. It's a she. A girl. And don't give me any of that my pronouns crap because one, it's a she. And two, they aren't your pronouns. They've been around forever and they have definitions. So America is able to return the uh, child to her mother. And, you know, that's cool. That's heroic. And that, of course, sets off somewhat of a flashback where she's thinking of her two mothers. But, of course, this is supposed to be in the middle of a battle. And so she is called to action because Monica is uh, taken out. And she runs up, goes to the entity. They don't exactly know who or what she is, just that she's attacking the planet. And she punches her. Done. And everybody's happy. Everybody's feeling good. And this is all normal comic book stuff. Nothing really to be said about this. You know, it, it is what happens in comic books. So, okay, all is good. And then this panel happens. Wow, the whole planet is healing itself. Hey, you saved me. Who are you? Okay, not much about the second panel is wrong. I mean, that's just normal. But she says, wow, the whole planet is healing itself. There is nothing that gives us any idea except for two words of what's going on. We just have somebody in the air, and the only reason we know she's the bad guy is because the comic book told us she's the bad guy. It said nothing about what the villain was actually doing. What was her motivation? Why was she attacking the planet? Uh, what damage was she doing to the planet? There is nothing that is conveyed in anything we've seen so far. And the only information about America that we had received is that she's part of of the Ultimates, which we actually got in the writing on that splash page. Yet here we are told that she is the leader of the Ultimates. However, in the, the battle we just saw, we get more of a sense that Captain Marvel is the leader, and that's even reinforced here as they're talking about plans and after effects and everything that was going on, and America is sitting silent and just throws off a quip or two while it sounds like Captain Marvel and Black Panther are doing all the serious talking. Oh, and that battle must have really made her lose weight. If you look at the first splash page where she's blocking the asteroid and you're seeing her now, yeah, they're, they're two different. She, the weight fluctuates in this book, I've noticed. And so in another bout of cringy dialogue, we get America visiting her girlfriend, and the girlfriend's not happy because she skipped out on dinner, but... That's easy going, and I understand this, and I like this because it shows that the girlfriend at least understands the superheroing bit. But it also shows that the girlfriend puts milkshakes in the refrigerator rather than the freezer so they can melt while they're having sex. I respect an Oreo milkshake a little bit better than that, but that's just a nitpick. And they finish their coitus, as they say on the Big Bang. And we find out that the girlfriend is breaking up with her because she does not want to stand in her way. All of this is fine, and I actually think it's okay. It's not the greatest of dialogue, but at least... It, and it's almost George Lucas bad, but at least it's not anything out of the ordinary. I mean, it's normal relationship stuff, and that's okay. Um, and that's... I would not say this is any part of agenda... It just is, and this is the best part of the book, except for one problem. It's more information we already learned. All of this is. This entire scene, if you really read the book, it could have started at this scene with the, the, uh, with the couple in bed. They didn't have to go through anything that happened before. Just start with the couple in bed, and it would have shown and told you everything you need to know. The whole first, what, five pages, six pages? are completely superfluous. You do not need them at all, and that is just the sign of a bad comic book. So we go to Sotomayor University. This is just, hey, she's Spanish, and we're going to uh, name a university after her because ha-ha, wink, wink. But what the heck, one big picture of a map, that's a good way to kill two pages in a comic book. And this leads to one of the cringiest scenes I've... I understand what they're trying to do, but what it comes off as is it 
seems like there's a white man about my age or 50, 60 trying to write a cool, hip, Hispanic person in college. That's what this comes off as. It's, it's really horrible as she ends up running across this, I guess it's a stomp troupe of some sorts, uh, a dance troupe that's in a college, and they do this bizarre rap here, and it just, oh my gosh, it's so, so bad. It's just bad. There's just no rhythm to the dialogue. Uh, how long did they rehearse this? Why did they stop her, of all people, to do this to? There's just no real, I mean, why? What's going on with all of this? Okay, so we find out she's part of the welcoming squad, but do they do this for individual students? I mean, the, the, wouldn't they do this in a, a group? Hey, new recruits, come on in, and here's our welcoming committee, and there's their dance. Instead of, you know, like casually explaining things, they just do this and then let her go off on her own. So what is the point to this except for to show that it's Sotomayor, we waste time doing stupid stomp dances. I, th that's the information that they're giving to you here. And so part of her excuse for leaving the welcoming committee is the fact that she is got she's late for class. Now, is this a community college? Or, I got a sense that she was going to college, like she was going to stay at a college and learn. And yet she arrived just a few minutes before class to not getting situated, not even changing her clothes into normal a normal outfit. Literally, she has been wearing the same outfit since she went to another planet. She went to have sex with her girlfriend, not taking a shower, by the way, had an argument with her girlfriend, left for college, and arrived, and literally she is the Gilligan of superhero comics right now. She has not changed her clothes through all of this. But I digress, she goes to her first class, where she learns about Neuron Arrows created by Rogelia Monte from Earth 10,009, and quickly finds out that things can actually affect you in the class, and she has three minutes to figure out how this person on Earth 10,009 defeated the Titans that were attacking Earth 10,009. And the teacher makes it very clear that the, the students cannot use their powers. And she even says, had you been on time, you'd know that I neutralize powers and magic, in these situations, the test is to rely on ancestral knowledge and not just brute force. Of course, America fails, not surprising since all the book has been showing us that she's not exactly the brightest star in the sky. And this uh, kid codenamed Prodigy, who we quickly find out is a former mutant and a member, former member of the Young Avengers, is, he steps up to take over. Now, he explains that Rogella has sacrificed her powers, and, of course, this gives him the powers the same way that in the story, as he explains here, she gained the powers uh, uh, to control water molecules. The thing is, if the teacher had blocked out the powers of every student, then everybody would have be under the same sacrifice and not just Prodigy, who lost his mutant powers in some situation before. So was this information that the teacher had given to them before America arrived to the class late? And if so, why would the teacher expect America to have known this? And if not, then it's just a challenge of who knew what before they entered the classroom. So once again, a useless scene. And if that wasn't bad enough to prove that Gale is a really bad writer, Prodigy, what the holy menstruation are you doing here? This is not something anybody says. It isn't. It, it, who is trying to be shocking here? What is America's character other than Gale wanting to try very hard? That is, that's the only character. We have not gotten any characterization of who, this, who she is. It's just, it's, oh my God. She's trying so hard and it's failing so badly. She is literally, there is no characterization to America. It is just a, a whole bunch of scenes and phrases trying to show to you that she can be a cool brown lesbian. The only problem with this, and it's a big problem, is that you never think that the person who tries too hard is actually cool, so she's just brown lesbian. That's it. There you go. America, the brown lesbian. Literally all the characterization were allowed for this particular character. So the book continues, and she goes and sees Prodigy's experiment, and Prodigy tells her basically what he's created is a time machine of sorts. And she gets the idea since she has to do something for class. 
she actually gets the idea to go and save her mom's. So she uses the time machine. Of course, this is a rash decision, as well as a selfish one. Kind of the second we see in the book, like the first one was when her friends were in a battle and she took time out to remember her mom, moms, excuse me. And now you have this where she is jumping through a time machine without second thought so she can go save them. And I understand wanting to save your moms. Don't, don't get me wrong. However, She's supposed to be the leader of a team, a little more of a thinker, but she's she just comes off very poorly, very badly in this book. At least it's more characterization. She's rash, brown, lesbian. Okay, there we go. We got that. So she winds up in World War II Germany, and she's kind of sad because she was really, really thinking about her moms and hoping that she would be transported there. And... Of, you know, okay, so she makes some impressive moves, throws a bomb to the side, tries to get cell phone coverage, and runs into Captain America, who says that Hitler is there. <sighs> Hitler is on a battlefield in this book. No one told Gloria, the writer, no one told her that Hitler was not a warrior on the battlefield. That didn't actually happen. Captain America never actually... Oh, they... Hitler wasn't on the battlefield. Didn't happen. Yet, what we're about to see is because a writer thought, hey, this would be cool, but that's how she's written the entire book. So anyway, America punches Hitler, who looks like Richard Spencer, because you know what? It's okay to punch a Nazi. Oy vey. Alrighty. So she throws the punch, and it changes everything, and boom, book is done. And in all honesty, this entire book is about as deep as a Dixie cup. It is such a shallow book. Things are put in here because the author thought it would be cool. There's no thought to story. There's no characterization. There's no real story, actually, to get in the way of the plot. Which, what's the plot again? She says, well, we're going to college. Yet, you spend four... How many pages getting to know her? Three, four, four... I think, how many? Okay, you have the battle. Then you have... Uh, the, the, the splash page where she's talking, then you have the, we asked people what they thought about America. Then you had the bit with her girlfriend. You had four scenes that told you the exact same thing. You could cut all of that and just start at the college and you would have the same story. There is nothing here that is any good. This book was so horribly bad. And then there's a letters page. Dandelions of the revolution. What revolution? I hope you ate something good today and at least one person hugged you. And preferably it's somebody you know and not a stranger. It's okay if today wasn't that day, cuz... Guess what? You're about to be part of comic book history, Nerd Burger Les Legacy. This is my first comic ever, no shit. <laughs> and I'm geeked out that it's in your hands. You know what? Congratulations, her. As much as I don't like this book and it's so horribly bad, she is in a published comic book. More importantly, this is America Chavez's first solo series, and I don't think it's going to last long. It's so big, like if The Hunger Games had starred Rue. What the fuck would make that big and Rue died? So, hey, here's the star. She dies halfway through. I, I don't understand what, what's the similarity, because they're brown? Or it's like the Marvel version of Zane's career post One Direction. Alrighty, there you go. But it's better because it's America. She's a star por portal-punching, girl-loving Latina babe on the verge of self-discovery who's also about to get a mega boost in powers. That's all we've learned about her. In all honesty, that is all the characterization that this woman needs for this particular character. It's horrible. Like, could I please be cool enough to hang out with her in real life IRL? Okay, what you gonna do? It's, it's, uh, no, she did, she in no way seemed pleasant enough to want to be with. America is that person. What person? There's room for everyone at her table, you know? Really? Let's see, one of the best parts about writing this series has been exploring America's vulnerability and gentleness. You didn't explore shit about anything. It's not easy being either of those things. What, vulnerable and gentle? Yeah, it is, let alone both. There's the fear that folks might take advantage of you or that you'll be viewed as fragile. Holy shit, this person's got some issues to deal with. People, on the whole, are not one-dimensional. 
They have their vulnerable sides. They have their gentle sides. They have their rush si rough sides. That's the way humans are. It, it's incredible to me that some people see themselves as something that other people cannot be. It shows more about them than it does about the people they're talking about. Projection, I believe, is what it's called, and I do believe that Gail is doing a lot of that on the people she's talking about right now. And the book continues. Navigating this world as a gentle and vulnerable human is probably the bravest thing anyone can do, and we do it every day. And in general, America cringes at anything related to emotions. So it's fun to watch her warm up to having feelings. Well, we haven't shown her or saw that she had too many feelings. There was a little bit in the beginning. And like I said, that lesbian scene was the best part because it actually opened her up. That was all. For the most part, though, you've got to wonder why. Why does she see Americans as emotionless? We are so far from it. Especially, I mean, take for right now with the kids who are out there protesting Trump. I know a lot of them are being paid to do that. But there's real anger there. Hey, that's an emotion. We show love and compassion every day. It makes me wonder what kind of life has Gail Rivera lived in order to have this really harsh and horrible view of America like that? And what kind of people does she surround herself with that the shallowness of this book would seem like great characterization to her? There may be a better story there than there is in any bit of this comic book. And actually, it's fun to watch America do anything because it's all being drawn by my partner in crime, the brilliant Joe Quinones. I hope I say that right. I couldn't be more thrilled to be working with him and the rest of the team. And you know what? I do like Joe Quinones' art. I mean, granted, it's not perfect in places, but it's usually very good and he can convey a page. I did realize, though, very early that her weight fluctuates throughout the issue. Let's see, where where were we? Where were we? All right. I couldn't be more thrilled to work with, to be working with him and the rest of the team, father and son, Joe Rivera and Paolo Rivera on inks. No relation to me, by the way. Okay, well, there we go. It's not a family affair. The legendary Jose Villa, uh, Villarubia, I apologize if I said the, ne the wrong name there, on colors, and wordsmith Travis Linham on letters. And technically, this was a good book. I'm not going to take that away. I thought the colors, the letter, everything looked good. Anyway, enough out of me for now. Keep daydreaming about star portals and what your superhero outfit would look like. Yes, we clearly need a name for this letters page, so send us your best ideas. Emotional America. Boom. Actually, a better one, a serious one, would be America the Beautiful. That's what I would call it, because that's a play off of the country and the name of the superhero. And it would fit with the whole life-affirming identity thing that's going on in the book that, frankly, I think is what's dragging Marvel down, and so does everybody else, except for the people over at Nerd Source. No, uh, Source Fed Nerd. You know, those stupid people that did that SJW video that I mimicked or mocked. All right. That's about all I've got on the subject, so, you know, I appreciate you guys watching. Please don't forget to click like, share, and comment. Tell me if, uh, if you think I'm full of shit on this book, tell me I'm full of shit. If you like it, tell, you, tell me you like the book. Tell me why, especially. And if you agree with me, tell me that too. Just leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, like I said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy. Have fun.